Hey everybody, Shay here. Welcome back to another Blind Let's Play of Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to give you a quick look at where things are at in this state. I put in about 30 or 40 minutes yesterday to clean things up before bringing you back. You'll notice the one attribute and one perk point here that were carryovers from the last episode that I never got to. Let's do that together. I couldn't figure that out on my own. <laughs> I just, I'll, I'll talk it through with y'all, all of you. Now I've, uh, deconstructed a bunch of weapons a bunch of blades uh a bunch of everything honestly i didn't need all of these some of those redundancies got put away same thing with these um and then we have the clothing of course i uh leaned some of this out and um destroyed some of it that was repetition or that we've already seen i'll try to show you some of the unique pieces that stood out to me um just because just because i feel like playing dress up again for about five minutes uh and then for here uh was the big test right here now there's two things i learned out of this test here it's of course that these cans of uh, liquids, so whether they're pops or water or whatever, uh, these monster drinks right here, they cost 10 out of the machine. Now I think if I sell them back, I believe all of these things go for the price that they are showing right here. I could be wrong. I don't remember actually all of a sudden, but in any case, those are 10. These ones up here, these alcohols are 30. Now I've been selling those. I believe I've been getting 30 for the alcohol. So I don't, I don't tend to destroy them because if you look up here in this corner right here, okay, if you look at the alcohol for like one bottle of alcohol, it's uh, six common, components and three uncommon components now if you look at the pop uh, which is a third of the price it's the same components uncommon and common components are exactly the same so in theory i could sell an alcoholic drink at 30 eddies back and i could buy three pops for it and then i would get 18 common components and nine uncommon components so there's already a math break here that you can take advantage of if that's true um so i i did that on the side and i got a lot of xp and i will uh show that now actually and there's some junk here there's some 750 pieces in here there's some records i get to collect um let me show you real quick this right here under technical ability you'll see right here we're at seven crafting at three thousand 400 uh, uh experience um we'll, we're at level seven like i said uh you'll see these two blank slots right here okay keep that in mind and i'm gonna bring you into this loaded game here where i've already done most of the work here uh, with all the crafting station and stuff you'll see the extra perk point here because bam so in deconstructing all mostly pop cans mostly i'm pretty sure it was all it was mostly the pop cans there was a lot of them there was a lot of them uh i got I think it was close to 8,000 experience. So this was at 3,400, remember? And we were at level seven. So it cranked out through the rest of level seven, all the rest of level eight, it got us to nine. So we got all the way to the top here, unlocks crafting specs for rare weapons, um, weapon mods and clothing. Uh, we got the extra perk here, which we can put anywhere, which I'll figure out in a second. Uh, when, when we move on to that, I'm not ready for it. I'm not mentally ready for that yet. <laughs> you look at the backpack, uh, backpack now, all of it's cleared out. We got the 750 eddy pieces here. We got the extra record, which I should destroy. Why is it in here? Why is it in here? I'll put the other ones in storage because I'm collecting them. This one can go. I'm destroying them for components now. I'm not really getting XP for it, but I am going to, I didn't even check that. When we get out of here, I'll see what happens with the, um, yeah, what happens with the XP because we shouldn't be getting any more XP. I don't, I don't know where it would go if we are getting it. I left the alcohol in there. To, I, I, now I'm going to check the stores to see if I'm actually getting 30 for those. I feel like that's what I've been selling for them for. That's why I've been saving the alcohol to sell back to vendors for 30. Um, and then let's take a look over here. We got some clothing left. I'll uh, play dress up doll with you for a bit <laughs> i've cleared some of these out they were very they were redundant like things like this increases mantis blade attacks by 20 percent 20 percent i had like seven of these or something like that same thing with this i've got four of them but again it's for mantis blades not for katana i thought these were for katana upgrades no mantis blades they're all for mantis blade updates so i don't think i need all of them they're worth 100 each i can destroy them for rare components so i mean it's it's useful for destroying pieces again there's a lot of stuff here but these ones i can actually swap out in and out and stuff so i just the crappier ones i got rid of you'll see the blades are cleaned up the guns are cleaned up don't need any more of that let's check out uh just he still looks the same nothing really changed because i love his look and it's things are going to be hard pressed to defeat the armor ratings a lot of this stuff got upgraded with a lot of those components that i pulled from rares even like um epics i destroyed some epics along the way i don't need the money anymore screw it <laughs> i'd rather get everything upgraded because i like his look i love this hat until i get something better uh yeah it's gonna I'm, yeah it's gonna be hard like just to show you just in case you haven't seen some of these pieces here's a ball cap it's okay it's neat we got the bandana there of course uh, if you want to go street or gangster or whatever the hell you got this one right here i do like this one quite a bit i'm going to store this one i don't know why i think it's the red and the kind of green tint here i just I feel like kind of lizard motif thing feels like it could still work i do get a couple of these ones kind of has that samurai look which i, I do think it's a pretty neat kind of look um but it looks like a construction helmet or a bike helmet but it's yeah done in that, that fashion it's pretty cool um 
I'm going to get rid of these pieces here. I don't need this one. Don't need this one. And I don't need the ball cap. Okay, so next, we've got the jackets. We've got a few jackets here. I talked about this thing. I really need to use this more in combat. I even have this thing right here. I've got a legendary mod in here that increases the crit chance by 15%. I almost forget putting this in because I always forget to put this on. You'll notice some other jackets here, though. They have uh, the capability, like the ability to put mods in here. This one we found with a mod already in it. It does. Uh, it reduces damage uh, from negative status effects by 5%. Uh, it's a, it's a cool-looking jacket. I don't I don't think i'm gonna keep it though it is worth 500 so where's the money ah there whew, thought i was like zero no so almost 600 so i'm not gonna destroy this i mean that's that's pretty decent money uh we got a vest here for the grenades and stuff a sack of uh, no militech vest i think they're cool i don't think i need them i don't know if i'll store them i might just get rid of them 500 and we got another big one here big chunky one i do like this collar thing quite a bit i think i've already shown this one i do like this one a lot i might store this one because i think it looks neat uh this one I, this one can go uh what else we have we have another jacket here this is a very cool jacket. Green, of course. We've got the yellow trims here. I'm going to keep this one. Sixth Street. That's a gang, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I do like it. I like the look of it. So let's keep that one. This one looks like a biker, a biker jacket. Like they got the yellow in here. And I don't know. I, I feel like it looks cool. I'll probably store it in the closet. Why not? I mean, there's no limits. So I'm going to store the damn jacket. Uh, this one right here, we had this one from Act 1. I did find a better one that has 53 armor instead of, I think it was like 12 or 16 or something. It, not that it matters. But just in case I want to put, put it back on, I have a better version. That's all. Because I can. Because again, hey, you want to go out on the streets with a uh, worker's vest? <laughs> Just because? It's got the same armor as some of these better jackets. It's crazy to me. Uh, you can get a wrench, run around with a wrench if you want to. Right? You can make it thematically appropriate. You can roll You can roll with this. I just noticed he has like a color tattoo on his armor. Is that like from a... Uh, right there. Oh, is that the... Um, that's a tiger claw thing, maybe. Probably. Okay, what else we have? We have the old uh, jacket, of course. We have this one I've already shown in the uh, other... Uh, episode i do like this i'm going to keep it uh this one uh kind of mundane kind of general but i do like the print that thing back here it's kind of the uh embod embed Im embed Im what's this called there's, there's there's a term for that anyways i like this i'll keep it around we have this one here it's got the pink poofy jacket just like one of these ones here it's it's less shiny of course i do like the logo right here with the maelstrom the eyes and stuff i love that that logo this one's pretty simple i think this one was in the uh storage i'm going to keep it there uh, it's simple oh what's on the back here again yeah that print right there I don't know why I get attached to like silly things like this. I do. I get a chat. I get I get attached. Where's my chat? And then there's this one. This one's just cool. This one's cool. And I jacked this one up. It's at 63. I think it can still go better. So I do feel like there there's a chance this one can get replaced. But look how cool this jacket is, man. Hard pressed, man. Look at this. I love this piece back here. Jesus, even this worker's vest is 168. Okay, fine. All the rest is sold. Or stored. I'll deal with that later. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. I got the these ones, these ones kind of look like they have a maelstrom spirit to them, vibe to them. They're kind of neat. I don't know if I need them. Like it's for like a, if you were like a, I keep want to say a Decker or a, uh, a Rigger from Shadowrun, you know, but no, the uh, Netrunner. So, but you know, if I was a Netrunner or I had more of those skills, I feel like it would work or I don't know, stealth, maybe you know, night vision. I, I don't know. I, they're cool, but look at these ones. Look at these ones. For like hitting the Badlands, kind of has like a, the goggle feel, you know. Looks like kind of lizardy kind of motif again. So I'm gonna keep those ones around. But look, but, but look at these ones. Look at these ones. It's holographic, like glow to them, and it kind of matches the skull down here. I think this one's really rad. I'm gonna keep these around. And, and I mean, the the armor is not that that bad. But we have to, and because these ones are upgraded, like the ones I have on on right now, I've up upgraded the hell out of these. But it just matches. I like the look of it. Um, and then we have these normal glasses, I guess. They're okay. They're okay. They're just normal glasses. So these ones are going to get destroyed. In terms of pants, nothing new to see here. We've already seen these poofy ones and these poofy ones. Uh, these ones right here have a, a cool print on them. I really like this right here. I like the color of them. Again, it has a Badlands feel to them. Uh, kind of more of a Mad Maxian feel. So I feel I, I'm going to keep these around just in case I could do something with them. They are white pants, but I'm going to keep them around. I mean, these ones are old, but they're cool. They got the red kind of, and it goes with the shirt, you know. But these ones have 40. These have three. So putting these shiny pants back on and we're done here. And in terms of boots, nothing really fancy to look at. I kept these around just because I got, I'm wondering if like the game knows what kind of color themes you're going with and send some of the, no, that makes no sense. But I feel like they're, they're really, they're kind of matching the whole green thing. Like, do they know I'm, I'm mostly picking up or keeping green things. And so they keep giving me green things like green boots here. Look at these ones, these green ones with the red laces to match the shirt with red laces. Like you, that's gotta be, that, that can't be random, man. These ones are great. I'm going to keep these around because I feel like they could work. Here's our old biker boots. I don't want to get rid of them yet. I think they're kind of neat. Uh, we do have the white versions of those, which I don't need. I'll probably sell these. How much? Not nah, 29. I'm going to destroy them just to show them off. There you go. And then we have these ones right here, which are basic. No, these are the ones I have. What's, what are these ones then? 
I see. So it's just it's the same kind of boots, but just with a different trim on them. And these ones I upgraded to 69. Damn. So there you go. Got some 69 ones. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> what else do I have to talk about? Nothing. We have to we have to level up the character. And now I, I got stuck here because I don't know what to do. And I don't remember what I was like talking to myself about yesterday when I wasn't recording. <laughs> but we have body. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want to maybe go up the body route because there's some cool things here, man. I was looking at um, just some of the running ones. Hold on. Where is it? Like this, this one. Health regenerates up to 70% of max health outside of combat. So just another regen option. I got one right here. It regenerates slowly during combat. There's one outside of combat. I already had one that's... I thought I had one. Oh, there's a like stamina. No, did I already have one that's out regen from... I don't know. I feel like I did. Anyways, we have more here though. Hold on. Watch this. Watch that. Watch this. Watch this. Health regen activates 50% faster during combat. We got one called Wolverine. I mean, that's really high level. It's 16. I'd have to... Ask. I mean, that's that's something to commit to we got uh, no i wouldn't get that one we have this one increased health regen in combat by 50 percent. so in combat i would just be re regening like a some bitch um we have i don't care about those ones increases melee damage by 10 percent. i have to believe this counts for swords i have to believe it it's not just for fists it's melee damage it's melee damage why wouldn't i get this there's like two ranks in here so i could probably crank up like a stackable here call me crazy but i think that's true god this really does take forever to look oh, god this is crazy Maybe they tweak this because now I remember like in the last couple episodes when I'm running it like triggers this, but my bar is not exhausted. So maybe they fix that. Uh, we have gladiator here. Uh, reduce the amount of stamina. Uh, consume when blocking. I don't care. Uh, health regens 25% as you move. I am always moving. So I would get cardio cure. It's only like to get the 12. Yeah, but six to 12. That's a long, it's a long journey. Journey. There's uh, another increases armor, but that's an 18. And there's the rock enemies cannot knock you down i don't think i've ever been knocked down in any case there's maybe two feats here there's this melee one here and there's the one where i heal while running these two right here so 12. these ones right here i feel are worth fighting for so uh so there's that okay so let's talk this through and then we have technical ability um because i also have an attribute point i can put somewhere to crank something up so we have we're at nine right now so i got nothing else i don't want either of these two right so i need to find something if i raise this to 10 could i get anywhere or do i have to wait to 12 allows you to make epic weapons of course i want that uh grants a 10 percent chance to upgrade an item for free that means you don't spend you think about this some of these cost me a lot like hundreds of components hundreds and so i would get that for free every 10th try 10 percent, i could potentially get it for free that would save me tons of components. Upgrading machine. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we have this grease monkey. Yeah, okay. We have uh, a cutting edge. Improves damage and all damage related stats of crafted weapons. Now, I don't really craft my weapons yet, but I will craft that katana. Um, and then we have edge runner artisan. Allows you to craft legendary, which I want for the katana. So I do want eventually to get this to 18, level 18 at least. Uh, what's this one? Increases the sale price of crafted items. Money maker. <laughs> What do I need for this? 20. <laughs> Shit, level 20. Damn. Okay, that's like end game. End game. That's not going to be... That's not going to get me a million. I want to get a million by mid game. I'm probably at mid game. I don't know where I'm at. Uh, grants a 20% chance to craft an item for free. 20%. I don't have to pay to craft an item. I would. That's free money. That would become free money right there at level 12. So, free money right there. Uh, crafted weapons deal more damage. Uh, I would craft it upgrades. How about that? Craft it clothing, more armor. That's good. I will. I can see myself making clothing. Right now, the jacket is the most uh, financially rewarding thing to craft in the in my gear in my options right now. Uh, ways okay. When dismantling an item, you get attached mods back. So I could then deconstruct the mods, get more components, make things with the component. There's like a whole this is whole thing stacks synergies are insane in here. Uh, reduces the component cost of upgrading items by ten percent. So that would come in handy i'm upgrading everything so i gotta get to at least 14 so right now this feels like the the one that i want to pump the most points into because i i got i want to get to at least 18 at some point sooner than later but i would have to what but i would have to get more attribute points which that takes me a little longer to get okay now blades god there's another regen option here restorative shadows at level 16 while in stealth increases health regen by 25 percent i should be a regenerating machine man i love the idea of that so um, I'll work towards it. 16. We have, uh, I don't, I wouldn't, I mean, if I had points to throw away at poison, sure, but I don't feel like I've gotten poison that much, you know? Oh my God. Crouch attacks from stealth with melee weapons deal 100% more damage, guaranteeing a crit. That's 20 though. So 20 though. Damn, man. That's crazy. 
Uh, throw not fuck you. <laughs> Increases damage from headshots. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a sniper. I need this. That's nine. So I gotta get this up. up. Yeah, I need this. I mean, I'm using sniper gun a lot, right? So maybe. Uh, let's see. Upon entry combat, crit chance increases. Ooh, detection time being increased. That's actually pretty cool too. You cannot be detected underwater unless that's some creature going on right there. <laughs> Temporary boost mo movement speed by 50% for five seconds when detected by an enemy. More speed upon detection. I've already got a couple of those pinging off. And we have cold blooded, of course, where uh, this thing kicks off. After I defeat an enemy, I get an increase in movement speed. I've got this one to increase the length of time. I could max these out right now if I want to stick around here and do more of these. Because this is really, like, once combat starts, heat, get this moving, slicing, dicing, like, yeah. I think I think this, this, this tree is pretty cool for this character. Increases attack speed by, like that right there, like attack speed by 10% per stack. That's crazy. That's a frenzy of blades. Are you kidding me? While Cold Blood is acting, increases damage by melee. So more increase of damage. Jeez Louise. Increases the max stack by one. Yeah, but that's level 16. That's way up there. And then on this side, we have increases headshot damage by 50%. Another headshot one. <sighs> the crazy stacks on headshots, man. Increase health regen inside and outside of combat by 50%. So I can get them on the athletics, but what? they're right here too, though. They're right here. So I could just get them here. How do, but then how do I increase? Oh, I guess I have to get a melee. These things trigger and then I get points here. I am level seven. It's not like I haven't gotten. I mean, I use these a lot. Yeah. Increases max stack count. What? Another one here. So there are different levels. You can chase these down. So we got a chaser here at 11 and then one at 20. There might be another one in here. Landing a crit uh, hit allows uh, has 25% chance of applying a stack. Okay. And when your health reaches 45, uh, Coppola is automatically activated. Yeah, so this one's an awesome tree. There's four trees, really, that I want in this whole game. And athletics, I want for the sprinting. I want for the running. That's cool. That's really cool. And the regen. But now that I've reread this thing, I, I don't actually think I've read all the way down the tracks here. I don't know. I, I thought maybe I gave up or something. But now that I'm seeing, there's almost the same opportunities here with Cold-Blooded. And these are stacking, and they're actually easy to level. And I'll probably max this out. So this gets me what? Increases all resistance by five, plus one perk. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Do I stack up? There's two trees in this one that I want sooner, I guess, right? So I should just cool cool it. Uh, let's see what else. Stealth. Um, oh, man, I don't know. Because I want, to, want money. But maybe I'll work towards the money now more slowly because hmm. the faster the better, man. Because the faster I can make the bigger items, the more money opportunities that turns into even from an upgrading perspective i can upgrade things faster and i can and i can break into things and i can break into things i just realized i've been recording for 20 minutes so i don't know how much i can cut around but i didn't anticipate that would be the episode i could just not include these in the run but then i'm like yeah but yeah they're kind of not important especially for 20 minutes what the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> so there's four. There's really just intelligence I don't care about, huh? I mean, Street Brawler sounds fun, but how can athletics still be a two? That's that is bothering the crap out of me. It really is. I'm running all of the time. I'm running all of the time. I'm running all of the time though. <laughs> how can it be? I'm getting XP for regenerating. Are you kidding me? <laughs> know what I mean? Like. What? Oh, this one's good though. Shit. Stacks too? Yeah, but I can. I don't know. <sighs> Ooh, this one right here. At a body seven, I can get this health regen one right now. I don't really need it. Regen up to 70% of max health outside combat. But I'm already regening to that outside of combat. Maybe it is redundant. Maybe this whole thing is redundant. I like it, but I, I need this to go faster. I don't like it. I don't like that it's not faster. Could I just start swinging? I could just start punching shit. Couldn't I? Just running around and punch shit. Or like swing with blunt objects. Oh, that's probably where I got this from. Using the club. I could run around the street swinging clubs. Yeah. You know what? I'm probably going to do that just to get that perk point. I am going to Skyrim this shit. I broke Skyrim. I broke Skyrim with this stuff. 
I did. I, I could prove it. I did. I, I'm not even no, I'm stuck talking about. <laughs> I'm not gonna get that high. That's not that silly. But I could get this free perk real early. Probably do it. Okay, what am I doing right now? <laughs> what am I doing? I love that regen so much though. Ow. Ah, oh, but there's the headshot in there. So, okay. We're gonna go with cool. I'm gonna regret it. I, I feel like it because I the 10 for unlocking things, I feel I was coming up a lot. Okay, but um Okay, and then the two points, I'm thinking I'm gonna spend them in here just to jack up. Increase the duration. Just these two, I suppose. Why not? Let's just uh, crank these up. There. Play someone cool. Okay, so with that <laughs> at this point yeah i can at least put something in the title to warn people not to bother with this episode so i'm going to catch up on anything in here that might have popped up okay we got pacifica here because i roamed into this territory uh, you could say that pacifica is almost a microcosm of night city's history it started with we're building a paradise and ended with dear god what a nightmare on paper it was meant to be the classiest and most iconic district catering to corporate employees nice city nice city's take on las vegas in its heyday, luxury hotels, entertainment halls, sandy beaches. Sadly, that Pacifica only existed in the blueprints drawn up by the architects or for, for fat cat investors. Those same investors pulled out every last any from the unification when uh, after the unification war broke out, fearing yet another inter-corporate conflict. Pacifica was abandoned by all but the most but the local Haitian community led by a gang of netrunners called the Voodoo Boys. The city has repeatedly tried and failed to bring the district back into to the fold, but it remains uh, isolated with its own rules, language, manufactured goods, illegal in Night City, and independent net. Oh. You could say that that Pacific that 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 Pacifica has blossomed under the Voodoo Boys' leadership, but poison oak would be but poison oak but poison oak? would be a more suitable metaphor. Poison oak. I guess a poison, but to anyone who enters, beware. We have Coast View. The northern part of Pacifica, bordering West Wind Estate and the inaccessible combat zone, the Voodoo Boys are most powerful in this distri district, particularly in the area of the market, Batty's Hotel and Pacifica Serenity Bible Church. The gang's hold weakens once you reach the Grand Imperial Mall, homeless encampments, and the old Ferris wheel. Oh, there's a Ferris wheel over there. <laughs> Where the scavengers reign supreme. If you're wondering which part of Coast View is safest, go back to the beginning and read the whole thing again. <laughs> this isn't a guidebook. There's no stars or reviews. Just consider yourself warned. Okay, then. North Oak. North Oak is the near newest district in Ice City. It is also the richest. Freedom from poverty and gangs. Now that... Now, now that's what you call luxury. It's hard to believe, but 50 years ago, this was just a rocky hill hemming the city in the north, uh, in the northeast. After the nuclear bomb went off at Arasaka Tower, almost 8,000 desperate night nice citizens moved to the higher grounds, putting up corrugated tin roofs and a la shanty town. Over the next few years, the hill became something of an independent district. Its poverty and duct taped houses a, gr a grim reminder of the past. Finally, in the 50s, the Night City Council, sponsored by corporations, decided to do something, to do some spring cleaning, officially waging a war against crime. The North Oak slum was forcibly evacuated and bulldozed, only to boast the city's price, uh, priciest real estate soon after. Today, North Oak houses the city's wealthiest elite, corpo execs, venture capitalists, actors, musicians living next, to, next door to their producers and rock stars such as Kerry Eurodyne. All of North Oak is dotted with spacious villas featuring their own microclimates and manicured lawns. Wow. North Oak is the city's very own Elysium and every night citizen's dream of neighborhood. It's kind of a little bit. Oh, I, I was going to say just like Hollywood and then they have a sign here. North Oak. <laughs> nice. Why is this thing lit up? I don't know why this is lit up. Kabuki. Umland. Little shopping. Little China. Heart's Desire. What the? I don't know why that's lit up. Okay. Uh, we have... Muammar El Capitan Reyes, Reyes, Reyes. Before he became Santo Domenico's most well-known fixer, El Capitan was Muammar Reyes, a corpo rat at the company that dealt what at a company that dealt in. Oh, who the hell cares anyway? <laughs> but all too quickly he realized that with corpos, it's always the same old tune. 
Either they fuck you or you fuck them. He preferred the latter. Often those who escape poverty like to help out their less fortunate peers, like El Capitan, sort of. On one hand, he makes a fortune as the go-to fixer for half of Santo Domingo's working class, but hey, at least he makes sure people can pay their rent. Don't like it? Find your own gigs. When a gangoon decides they'd rather save a buck by breaking your legs instead of paying you, look around. Is that Capitan waiting from his limo window with a smirk on his face? The corporate hair. When 17-year-old William Hare first saw a poster promoting service in Militech's paramilitary forces, that's the guy we had to mow down. Awkward. He finally understood his purpose in life. As his impressionable eyes scanned the multi-million dollar equipment and armed and armored soldiers, he felt a brutal power and desire for adventure swell inside him. How could a kid who spent his whole time in the slums of Rancho Coronado I think that's what it was called. I know it's in there somewhere. Uh, resist. The promotional specialist in Militech's recruitment office certainly think so, and they're usually right. Hare enlisted and eventually rose to the rank of corporal. He got everything he dreamed of plus more. Combat military-grade cyberware, a sense of power, com camaraderie, and adventure. As for the latter, there are some parts he'd rather forget, especially the ones he's forbidden to talk about. But uh, after Brazil, everything changed. He lost his good health and came back to Night City a veteran, but with no hope of ever returning to active duty. That's when Hare first asked himself, had Militech taken away more than they gave him? Hmm. Finn Gerstadt. Jig Jig Street's best ripper doc, Fingers, as he calls himself, thinks very highly of himself. Truth is, he just... He's, he's just not the worst. What he lacks in equipment he makes up for with his determination and resourcefulness, which is why some also call him the Recycle Doc. His services are sought after not only by the sex workers off Jig Jig Street, but the whole city. Fingers can fix just about anything and will always start a tap when you're flat broke. True, his quirkiness, obsession with the human body, or his clammy hands put can put some people off, but then again, he's mm -hmm, the best Jig Jig Street's got. Okay. Rogue. In her younger days, she was a professional merc. Today, she's the queen of fixers, one of the last legends of Nice City who's more than just handed down stories. Unlike her friends from the good old days, read Johnny Silverhand, Rogue does more than get by. She runs the afterlife and, by definition, almost the entire Night City merc network. Every series job needs her thumbs up and B's mission to find Anders Hellman is very serious indeed. Okay then. Got it. Noted. <laughs> shards. 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 I could not remember that word ah, for the life of me. Okay, we have a bunch of shards. Um, let's see. Uh, am I going to read the world ones? Not. No. The articles. Is Does anything stand out based on anything I might have encountered that I would like... <laughs> This is going to be a fun one, I think. Big five employees in Nice City. Uh, some of these are tempting to like. I, I, yeah, they're all fun. They all look like fun to read. Wow, I have a lot of them. <laughs> a lot. Oh, geez. That's, I just noticed the number here is, I think, new. It's like 21 new or no. 43 new. <laughs> Six. Okay, it's not. It's six total. Okay. Whew. We have uh, technology. Sure, why not? We'll, oh, God. Text wall. Uh, relive it. Brain dance quarterly. Brand dance editors have long strived to strike a balance between real, lived experience and technological experimental purity. The more heavily processed the material, the more abstract are the pathways, the clearer the brain dance recording. These fundamental elements of design have guided editors since the first wave of brain to brave brain to brain experience sharing technology to cold in their pursuit of balance however editors have clearly shown a bias for purity over naturalism over the years even going so far as to use it as a point of pride in the quality of their production but in the industry's latest push for greater purity has the purpose of the technology already been forgotten will we not find ourselves processing and filtering a brain dance recording to to the point that the emotional experience no longer extends beyond what we receive from film television and video games after reliving some of the latest titles on my feeder unit this once academic question one uh, now feels all too inevitable with the industry's current tra trajectory for a moment let's consider why some reports suggest more and more users are searching for unlicensed titles on the on the black market so-called black brain dances extreme brain dances or xbds 
are we so sure is the illicit content they are after or maybe the real draw is the residual grit we editors try so hard to remove distracting thoughts irrelevant memories loose associative threads emotions stretching beyond the desired spectrum what if this noise is not so superfluous as we believe it, it to be what if these peripheral experiences hold the potential to elevate a good brain dance to an exquisite one we do ourselves a disservice by not exploring these questions before our blind crusade for brain dance purity leads this industry straight into the bin of obsolete flash in the pan technology. Relive it, the quarterly magazine for brain dance editors, amateurs, and enthusiasts, volume 4, 1778. Rewiring Synaptic Pathways. Oh my god, chapter 1. The first, uh, the 21st century heralded a worldwide revolution in neurotechnology we as a society can no longer ima image no longer imagine an existence without technologically enhanced uh, heightened senses enhanced memory capacity and pain modulators by linking our neural systems with computer chips we are capable of learning complex skill sets in seconds then sub sub subsequently forgetting them again the instant they are removed today after nearly 80 years of increased increasingly in increasingly incorporating these technologies into our daily lives we must now ask ourselves what comes next in recent years the academic community has reignited discussions on possible new methods to influence brain plasticity is it possible to create permanent neural pathways using coprocessors can we expect a breakthrough regarding dopaminergic data manipulation in our lifetimes if so what will be the consequences the probable emergence of commercially viable artificial neurotransmitters transmitters would undoubtedly reshape the health science field, yet would simultaneously introduce a potentially destruct destructive tool to most governments and corporations. The field of plasticity manipulation remains in its infancy, but most experts agree we should prepare for a future in which such neurological re rewiring will become a co as commonplace as the cybernetic implants used so pervasively today. Studies should begin exploring now how science can ad adapt our bodies to optimize the effects of this technology while minimizing its abuse and potential unwanted side effects Woo! that's a ooh, I'm starting to go dry already <coughs> need some whiskey when i met what was this blaming bart bart moss by bugbear when i imagine what the net was like before bart moss i see thousands of potential threats and thousands of opportunities course the whole system was unstable corporal runners pulling one way post-war rogue ais pulling the other financial markets tanked virus mutation spiraled in uncontrollable ways and runners got cooked in their living rooms every now and then bart moss saw the net as a grenade waiting for the pin to get pulled and that's exactly what we did fuck it right let the world burn bart moss fucked the system but fucked all of us right along with it just look at it now corpse are on top, as usual, the black wall, which was supposed to protect us after the net's crash, is just another control tool in NetWatch's arsenal. Before Bart Moss, the net was an untamed jungle. If you could navigate it, you had a chance to survive. You were free. After Bart Moss, the nets, like airport security uh, check, every step you take, NetWatch is checking your papers and performing a thorough cavity search. Oh, but all for your own good, of course. There's a lot of shit. Ooh, this one looks interesting. God damn. Boom. <laughs> Text wall. We got Bushido and Neo Postmodernism. The Bushido franchise is a litmus test of our time. This great, this groundbreaking film series puts on full display the entire spectrum of American society, masterfully painting out the greatest problems of the neo modern era. Live fast, die never was its own way, it, that's a, was in its own way a generational manifesto on the affirmation of life the use of vivid colors shaky cinematography ubiquitous blood effects and pervasive bl brain splatter testifies to the extraordinary self-awareness of the director who once revealed in an interview how he fucking loves it when hot chicks dissect the shit out of the bad guys okay perhaps no other concept uh, more amply describes the underlying societal ethos than Bushido 3 was released. Not what I anticipated when I started reading this, by the way. <laughs> that was going to be some uh, philosophical thing. You know, postmodernism and the Bushido code or something like that. No, no. Uh, especially worthy of note is the repetition of subsequent installments of the implant bomb motif through the prism of which the protagonist reinterprets reality. One example of this 
Convention's flawless implementation appears to be the latest film in this series, Bushido X Fate to Black, the scene in which the powerful Gor Gorilla dis could I get, I maybe dis disembodies the arm of Jake, as played by the transcendent Tim Kelly, demonstrates in brilliant form the duality of the human condition. On the one hand, Jake loses his cybernetic arm, a symbol of both his tragic past and the ongoing techno uh, ontological conflict within his psyche. On the other hand, it is precisely due to this dismemberment that Gorita is blown to bloody bits by a seasonal explosion sequence, a final disintegration of the antagonist's body into a blood spray of gore. How should this be interpreted? It is a metaphorical cry of deeply rooted despair, a manifestation of the personal transgression. This fragmentation of body could likewise be interpreted as a fragmentation of the individual mind, thus provoking the question whose mind? Indeed, had everything the viewer seen of Jake's struggle been in fact a personified embodied fear? Had he not been been, they like to double up words here with typos, huh? Had he not been embroiled in epic battle with a vile monster, but rather only with himself? Could the entirety of Jake's narrative being only a manifestation of some cyber psychosis dream state among all the depth and nuance that has defined this franchise since its inception only one thing is truly certain bushido has forever changed the world of cinema it's like uh what was i gonna say it's like fight club meets uh uh matrix and uh there's more in there terminator <laughs> okay get high at home these days when the police have so much more to worry about than whether the kids are smoking special cigarettes when designer drugs could be bought on any corner, we say back to the basics. Why line producers and dealers' pockets when you can make your own concoctions in the comfort of your own garage? In the following chapters, we'll give you a quick, easy to follow recipe for your favorite boosters. It's fun. <laughs> okay, then. We have notes. These are probably the important ones. I wish there was a distinction and when you pick things up that were uh, relevant, like contextual to the experience you're having in the game, I wish they made it um, more obvious that the stuff you picked up, you needed to read right away. Because sometimes like, I'm, I'm just in the mental thing of looting and sometimes I, I, I could get into a computer while these things are still triggering off and some of them might be the notes in the room. You know, I know I could be patient, but maybe they take just maybe a little too long to pop up. Or if they were notes relevant to the scene, I don't know, mark them differently or make them pop up so that I had to say close or something when they're relevant to the scene. Otherwise, if they're just like these random ones you pick up here, who cares? I don't know, maybe there's like a, there could have been a distinction made here. I don't know. Techie things, notes. I forgot to change the notifications in the pressure gauge. Add an automatic reset when starting it up. Tracking module froze underwater again. Probably the waterproof case is blocking the signal. A fix. Make an opening for an antenna. I think I read something in an email. This is tied to the furnace. The thing that I could have exploded something via a computer or something like that. I think. Something, I think that was where I read something about an antenna. I know some busted thing. I didn't blow it up. Connection lost with the barom barometer when set at bathymetric mode fix add on automatic signal to switch back to a lot maybe i don't know i don't know i don't know the context brain dances concepts bd of a woman giving birth pro nobody's done it yet con have to hook up a oh my god prenatal wreath which is more expensive bd of the most common dreams complication pros is doable con i'll have to consistently scroll the dreams of a dozen couple dozen people over at least one year to catch the repeating themes flying swimming falling going to work school naked two bds scrolled by two actors neural tracks set up so that it looks like one bd pro it'd be nova con tech for it doesn't exist jeez louise okay um and once again these ones at the bottom are cleared out uh the ones at the top are rough all rough technology is good i mean i'm almost there man i'm almost there it's up here it gets gets rough man maybe i'll try it yeah i'll push some of these i've already committed this episode <laughs> it's just it is what it is we have the chronicles of titania book one you haven't an idea what you're talking about the green-haired woman snorted and mockingly smiled i visited many worlds each built on a lie all although this might be the first time i've seen his people oops what happened so stubbornly closer closed their eyes to it design felt a rage rise inside of him how dare this woman an outsider to the utopia of titania so harshly criticize a system that has guaranteed the happiness of millions he thought to himself if anyone is blind here it's you visan finally erupted titania knows no inequality no scarcity 
For the first time in human history, everyone belongs to the privileged class. The woman smiled softly with a mischievous twinkle in her amber eyes. Is that so? She asked. And, and your work at this cannery, why are you unhappy there? Vizan forced himself to remain calm, and in truth, he wasn't sure why the stranger's comments had made him so upset. Perhaps it wasn't the foreigner's fault she could not comprehend that humankind had finally achieved the ideal society, her home, as she described it, resembled a primitive world, one long tainted by the stain of feudalism. In a sense, she was like a child, intelligent, yes, but ignorant and self-righteous to a fault. There must be a group within society responsible for this type of work, Vizan explained. Thankfully, due to the advancements of robotics, the means of production have become fully uh, automized and shifted away from our hands. We now serve only in supervisory roles. So, to answer your question, no, I'm not unhappy. The robots do my work for me. Wait, you do know what robots are, right? Of course I do. We have something similar, only made from clay and stone. The lime-haired woman replied, still with a smug tone in her voice. Very well, your world has done away with work done by hand. But if that is the case, does that not mean workers, such as yourself, have lost their former value? Are you suggesting there are none who govern your progress from above your standing, who determine your responsibilities? No response. The woman's golden eyes flashed as she laughed at his son's confused, flustered silence. My apologies. The stranger's lips curled into an embarrassing smile. Maybe you are... Maybe you are an equal member of this corpo corporation, but of, but of what I've seen here, nothing about it matches what you have described. I sort of lost the narrative near the end. I thought this was going to be some other. I mean, it's probably there. I just didn't. Is it because he like he's he's just so used to like doing what he does that he had he stopped asking questions. So he's, so his value he can't progress. His value can't progress because he basically, there's only one type of job everyone can do. And so you find no worth in what you do. And so how do you find worth, like the meaning, meaning of doing what you do and for what? And how does that impact how you see yourself maybe? I don't know, I might, I'm overlooking it. I'm overthinking this now. I don't know, <laughs> I sort of lost it near the end. Okay, uh, Sayonara Station by Luke Steelman. Wait a second, before we start, have you wondered how this book ended up in your hands? Where it came from? Who delivered it? Of course you haven't. Nobody ever wonders about things like that. It's a shame because the answer quite in, the answer is quite interesting. I go as far as to say it's fucking fascinating. Not so long ago, most shipments were made via sea on freighters, cheap, quick, and relatively safe. But during the fourth corporate war, some genius in Arasaka had an idea to release automated self-replicating mines controlled by an AI into the ocean. What could possibly go wrong? A lot, it turns out. The AI, the AI had a single objective, destroy enemy vessels. Simple, right? Nusa, Militech, Militech ships would get blown out of the water, while the Arasaka Free State ships would sail on, sail by untouched. Oh my gosh. Except for the AI's ironclad logic. Since there was a non-zero probability that a vessel waving a friendly flag might also have enemies on board, in the interest of optimization, it would also be sunk. Of course, when the lead heads back at Arasaka headquarters realized what they'd done, they rushed the update. They rushed to update the software only for the AI to reject it as a virus. And thus, because of a handful of individuals' complete lack of imagination and foresight, the history of maritime travel came to an end. So let's come back to the question: How did you end up with this book? Unless you live in Chicago where it was published, then surely not via the net, since that was destroyed by Bart Moss. Maybe it was shipped by plane, but air freight is incredibly ex expensive, so most likely not. By car then. We can't rule it out, but if I had to bet on it, I'd say it came from your city, city via train. Imagine that trains, that's right, the ones that go choo-choo, have survived into the present day. Just last year, 15,526 miles of new train tracks were put into use including the underground tunnels connecting Tokyo and Shanghai. At top speed, an armored train can complete the distance between the two cities in under five hours. Now that's something I had to experience for myself. Two days later, I was in Tokyo, standing on the platform of Sayonara Station. And of course, my nose is starting to itch, and I need to sneeze. <laughs> when I read too much, no matter what I'm reading, what, what video, it doesn't matter. It happens every time. Okay. Crime block. Let's push, let's push through the let's push through the literature. Crime block. 
McCrane scanned the room with a deft Kuroshi sweep. This corpse was no different than the dozens he'd seen over the years. The dead man's eyes frozen in fear, his ligaments, wires, and intestines strewn about the floor. None of it made any impact on McCrane anymore. I've lived too long, he thought, and cops, we don't die quick, usually find ourselves playing for the other side eventually. This case is as clear as a used napkin on Deputy Zoos. At Zeppity, what Deputy Zeus, he murmured to Junior Inspector Malinowski. Cyber Psycho, come in through the window. Victim, let him inside. Must have known each other. Prints are all over the glass. Holy shit, Malinowski shook his head in disbelief. How'd that fucker get all the way up to the 11th floor? See those grooves on the windowsill? Climbing spikes, implants, kid. These days are getting installed to pull stupid rooftop stunts. Get cheap thrills. Malinowski made his way over to the window to examine the evidence his superior had so effortlessly pieced together. The veteran detective lit a cigarette and, st and stared back into the corpse's lifeless eyes. Although McCrane had never seen this man before, he felt as if he had known him for a long time, and still, he felt nothing for him. No pity, no compassion. This was only a body now, no longer a person. Suddenly, Malinowski, uh, Malinowski's unsteady voice woke McCrane from his thoughts. Uh, boss? These prints on the outside of the window, uh, they they belong to you. McCrane let out a quick, puncturing chuckle. Never much took you for a jokester, Malinowski, the detective said with an amused smirk as he rolled up his sleeve and exposed his wrist. And I wonder, just how would I get there without any climber claws, huh? But before the junior inspector could respond, McCrane felt an uneasiness shoot up his spine, the room, this man, the smell of his blood. He felt compelled to walk over to the to the savage victim and reach inside his pocket a photo his own face staring back at him Molinowski slowly drew his pistol i believed in you the shaken protege uttered with a pain in his voice all this time i idolized a, a murderer i i don't understand muttered mccrane scarcely loud enough for uh, to hear his own voice something else began to drown out his words even his thoughts a strange primal fear force for the first time in my life i don't understand and then crack a gunshot chrome Night love. Crow man's mask glinted in the light of the setting sun like a beacon in the dark of this rotten city. Lucille's heartbeat began to quicken. Her legs trembled beneath her. Hot blood pumped through her veins in a way she didn't know it could. He looked at her, his strong masculine figure towering over the bloodied corporate corpse, which I like that alliteration there, corporate corpse, uh, which just a moment ago had violently tried to defile Lucille's virtue. Ooh, there's the double maybe meaning there too with the virtues in the game you know what I'm uh, what's the matter with me her mind raced why him why me hundreds of questions burned inside her head but when she finally parted her lips to speak only one question emerged who are you really crowman took lucille into his cold metal hands she flinched at the touch you know i can't tell you that they'll find you they'll rip my secret out of you any way they can and then kill you i don't care about any of that i love you i love you she couldn't feel his face his real one, concealed under the veil of chrome, but she could have sworn she could hear a note of emotion in his deep voice. You love a dream. You don't know who hides under the mask. I don't care what you look like. What if I'm disfigured? I can afford an op I can afford an operation. And if I'm an android? It doesn't matter. And if then suddenly in one swift motion, Chrome Man removed the mask to reveal the face of Domita de La Veli. If I'm a woman. Lucille stood there, dumbstruck. A tempest of emotion swirled in a frenzy throughout her being, but in, a, but in another moment the storm calmed and she smiled warmly, taking her savior's face into her hands. The proverbial clouds of her tumultuous mind began to part. Lucille was beginning to see clearly at last. How many times does a woman need to say she loves you? Lucille smirked and whispered softly before you believe her. That was a nice one. The Green Death the weathered man peered into the eyes of the young nomad as if trying to divine his thoughts. Don't misunderstand, he said. I don't mind unexpected guests, but you must recognize when a man lives alone in the middle of the desert, he, had, he has a right to ask uncomfortable questions. The boy wouldn't make eye contact, instead glancing nervously through the window as if expecting a spot, uh, to spot an armada of battle drones cursing, coursing through, straight for him across the night sky. I, I'm running away, he muttered after a moment of hesitation from Green Phantom. He's been following me ever since Yellow Creek. 
The old man didn't move a muscle, save for a twitch at the corner of his mouth, revealing he knew more than he cared to admit. You have nothing to fear, he said softly. The green phantom only comes for the worst criminals. If you had regret in your heart, he'll forgive you. He'll offer a second chance. The boy's anxious demeanor suddenly turned to, her, to a rebellious grin. I regret nothing. And you, old man, you don't have the faintest clue what you're prattling on about. You're wrong. I've also met the phantom once before. The tenderfoot nomad's eyes widened in surprise for a brief moment. It seemed as if there was a question on the tip of his lips, but he refused to ask it. It's late, the old-timer said. You should sleep. You're exhausted and need to gather your strength before you continue running. <laughs> if that's what you choose to do, my home is open to you tonight. The boy uttered no thanks. Without a word, he stood and entered the small, dark bedroom where his host had prepared a bed. To find his way, he switched on his infrared, then immediately froze in place. There was a body lying in the bed. He edged closer until he could discern its shape, a pool of cooling blood, withered hands contorting unto, into unnatural ankle, angles, the vacant dead eyes of the old man he had only just been talking to in the other room. <laughs> Suddenly, the walls began to emanate an otherworldly olive glow. The boy could sense a figure enter the room and stand behind him. If you regret nothing, hissed the cold, emotionless voice, then why do you flee? Then black, the world of the young nomad plunged into darkness. Dun, dun. That's it. Another, another pff, collection closed. Look at this one. <sighs> Look at this one. <laughs> Alerts. Warning. Tiger Claws headed for the building. Get back into your homes. Lock and barricade the doors. I'm shutting down the doors and blocking the emergency exits. I have no context. It says other. These can't all be long. Contracts. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, I wonder if some of these like would have held some of those codes that are for machines that... <laughs> This doesn't say anything. That's jargon. Archived. Haideto. Ho. I know who talked. Said you were going to the building. A carry. Who? Girl, I might be dumb, but I ain't that dumb. Eddie's first, then Intel. Listen, gank, gonk. I'm a count of five. And if you don't give me that name, I'm going to shove your balls so far up your ass that you choke on them. One, two, three. Martin Lawrence. Chum's name's Martin Lawrence. Techie here. Set to hide. See? wasn't so hard shit that's context that might have been important Dwayne parties tomorrow need something preem I mean something that'll burst your skull sponge I want people screaming rainbows and blowing technicolor chunks some shit that'll make your come down seem like a bad trip I got the eddies you get what I need you'll be the richest dealer in town let me know Chum. Dwayne 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 I gotta try to remember who the fuck Dwayne is it's not like that's like oh Dwayne hey Dwayne archive conversation Dwayne and Bert hey hey Listen, we need to hook up for the party. Some kind of cocktail that'll crank the good times, but kind of fucks us up, you know? The usual stuff, but up the notch. Look, that's not going to work anymore. Uh, the fuck's your problem, pussy? You're not getting any more from me. Listen, Shum, you must be fucking brain melt level skits right now because I think you forgot your end of things. You, sim you supply. We offer protection. I protect myself now. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But shit, we can check right fucking now if you want. <laughs> Try me, I'm ready for you. Then you better grab your umbrella, warm dick. Me and the boys will be there soon, and it's gonna rain lead. Dwayne, Dwayne, and Bert, Bert. Who the fuck? Where is this from? Oh my god, treatment plan. As I'm editing now, I'm sure maybe I'll I'll re I'll realize it while I'm editing the old episodes. Maybe, I, I maybe, treatment plan. For maximum muscle gain, I'd say muscle bustle, 100% guaranteed to work. Though it does come with a whole host of side effects: liver cure uh high blood pressure, low li libido and uh, low libido and erectile dysfunction, plus periodic rage. Attacks. The supplement is administered. I am every six hours. If you're interested, please give me a call. We've got creditor here. Got to pay a little visit to another Chum, who thinks he's too smart to pay back his ads with interest. Start off right with a good whack to the jaw, and if he stands his grounds, do a full restock of his store. You'll get 10% of whatever you grab. Jesus. Archive conversation. Oh damn. There's tons of these, man. Damn it. So, so, wawa, so, waya, and cure. Okay, I'm at the antenna. Oh, this is the antenna thing again. <laughs> what now? Like I said, insert the dirty splinter 
and the slot beneath the panel and you're in biz right except there is no slot beneath the panel hmm. oh this is the one that on the, the tower thing this wasn't the furnace the furnace room this was a thing i did on the street or something we had the code we got the code and we had to go up to the thing i just did it <laughs> shit uh soon be a model name and serial number close to the edge yeah well tell me oh that's where you get the the serial number me oh, i don't know Check the base left side should be there. I guess it's just it's a way like you find this and so you know how to do it and so you go up there and you just it just assumes that you know when it does it. Kenton and Ray, SOS, what's up? Got two pounds of lead in my gut. That's what's up. Someone set up a trap. Gina, Pita, Wacko, all gone. Oh fuck, made it out. I'm in the sewers. But if you don't get to me soon, they're gonna mark me or I bleed out. Got it. We're on it. Hold on, you. I'm trying. Don't know what that is. Maybe it's from the bar that got on the pool table. I don't know. <laughs> Making assumptions now. Uh, we got Backsaw and Sonoto. Sonata. Okay, Gonk. Took the bait on his uh, way to you now. If this ends up being another fi uh, firefight, there's going to be health to pay. No, 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 no. He's uh, he's alone. He's whacked. Do whatever you want with him. A uh, token of our goodwill, our apology for the that unfortunate incident. Oh, that's the car one. <laughs> I'm putting them together. It's just, this is a weird way to do it. Unfortunate indeed. So this would have like, wait, how did I get this shit? I picked up the car right away. Oh, because I went into his room. Oh, because I went into the garage and I picked up a bunch of shit. And I took the car. So I would have like read this and I would have known there was someone in the trunk. Unfortunate indeed. Don't let it happen again or we'll have our own unfortunate incident. Got it. Have fun with Alvin. Oh, okay. Alvin and Backsaw. Tigers won't be showing their claws no more. Huh? Took care of that biz. Paid him a visit with my boys. Alvin, uh, didn't suspect a thing. Shit had a shit was a bloodbath. Don't know how many we got, but thirty at least. Alvin took out thirty, so he's on my side. The hell, I, I don't regret anything. That's what I'm reading right now. Preem, you arranged that with someone, uh, someone up top. Alvin, oh, cause he was a corporal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, ain't gotta ask around. Have Chooms telling me how to live my life. Enemies there to get fucked up, right? Yeah, shit, you. Congrats, you got some balls. So there's some shenanigans going on here. This guy actually went in, maybe took out a bunch of like 30 tigers here, and then this guy got screwed over by it. Backsaw, because he didn't. Maybe he thought the guy was gonna get wrecked. And then to make up for it to the tigers, he had to put him in the trunk and send him as a gift. Yeah, piece that story together. That's a weird way to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gawker. The fuck do you do? What the what? The fuck did you do? You quack! What? The pain editor? You you chip doesn't fucking work. It hurts so bad. It makes me want to rip my optics out. When I find you, I'll cut your throat with a fucking scalpel. Miller Miller. Was this one of the? Was this psych, cyber psycho man? Try booting up the implants first. Use the run editor command. Okay, yeah, that works. Sorry. You're welcome. Oh, and your next procedure come comes with a negative 100% discount. <laughs> I don't know. Grizzle and Ryder. All done. Info from bad. Checked out. Stuff was there. Maelstrom had no idea. It knocked him right off guard. Just one shoom got away. But we put enough holes in him. Well, find him anyway. Don't want any witnesses. This is Ryder. Got it. Guy's bleeding like a burst pipe. We'll follow the trail. Oh, this is the blood trail that we followed. Down to that one piece. Okay. Okay. Ryder. Nova. Then straight back to me already got a buyer for the supplements so for the suppressants got it we'll clean up and move out okay so we broke the code 1987 should work preem this is the thing with the the wraith i think maybe pretty sure <laughs> i say yeah how many i'm good let's just do this because this is actually contextual now i did not anticipate going over an hour with these things but it is what it is hey pete fix the turret seriously seriously replace the capacitor verite core Quartz, resonators, and voila. Unfortunately, it's not all the way there yet. Still, the safeguards left to bypass. Could you maybe give me a little hint? Remember you did something like this once? Right, yeah. After re restart, hold the button on the... Le okay, this is another maybe command to like reboot. What, is something triggering here? Not right now. Is the add command? Yes, to be honest. That's it. Should be up and running. Nova, huge thanks, man. Nova, 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 Nova. Oh, Nova's just like a yeah, huzzah, you know? <laughs> Ah, uh, wait, Isaiah, big goof on my part there. You need to tag active equals yes onto the end of the command or else it'll start. 
I will still read you as hostile. Hope. Oh no. Oh no. Hope I didn't catch you too late with that one. <laughs> Let me know if it all shakes out, alright? Okay? Z-Man. Oh no. That's, that's terrible.